Hey, what's up? <laughs> nice to see you. Just kind of uh, going through the first game, watching the film, just kind of what's your main impression, main takeaways about where you guys stand like as an offense coming off that first game? Um, plenty to clean up, right? Um, plenty of, um, call them huddle errors, right? Tons of MEs, uh, mental errors, pre-snap penalties, right? A lot of controllable things that, you know, they they played a, a base 3-4 defense, right? With outside linebackers, they switch it up and go to nickel. They play like a, a cover three, five-man rush, match type type coverage. Like, it really doesn't get more more basic than that. Um, and we didn't, we couldn't have had a more basic game plan and there was still plenty of mistakes that are extremely avoidable, right? Um, that's all the negatives. Um, a lot of positives. Two young quarterbacks played really well. Got a lot of run. Um, executed extremely well in, in difficult two-minute situations. Um, and there's a lot to be excited about. Um, a lot of push from the offensive line. We got to run the ball better down in the red zone. Um, those are probably my main takeaways. Is, is it more frustrating when it's the, the huddle errors and not like – Execution way, way yeah. more, yeah, way more frustrating because it's the most controllable thing you could have, and um, whether it's um, lack of being in your book or um, you know you're just you're letting the game get to you, or you're tired and you get to the huddle and you don't hear the formation or the play call, or I mean you got to have the whole picture, right? And it, especially if we're gonna play in the first 15 plays and we have three MEs in the first 10, it's like. You know, we're we're killing ourselves, and either we're not taking it serious enough, or um, you know, there's 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 just too much to be said for things that are completely within our control in the National Football League. With, uh, not having joint practices with uh, San Francisco this week, like, like what what do you all get out of those? Maybe that you don't in the normal regular joint practice. practice. One more time. Joint practices are not happening. Okay. Uh, so, like, like when you do get those, like, what do you get out of them? Like, what yeah. Are okay. Gotcha. Sorry. Um, coming from a place of ignorance, I apologize. Um, yeah, those are um, those are extremely good opportunities to go against a different look, um, a, a different rush, a completely different unit with different play calls. Um, a lot of defensive, a lot of defensive call or a lot of defensive structure might be a little bit similar, but the calls and the way they play certain certain plays are completely different, right? Um, like their structure of defense, for me personally, their defensive ends are hard upfield rushers. Um, they pick a spot and they rush up the field and they they read to react, right? Um, so that's a completely different look from what we just played, right? Where we're playing a, they're they're going to play a four three scheme. We're going to play a three four scheme. Um, this past week with the Cardinals where these guys are strong two gap players um, that rush five and have six deep in coverage right well these guys don't play like that and um, Thursday and Friday would have been a tremendous opportunity for us to get that look obviously they have just coming off of a, a Super Bowl berth um, you know tremendous tremendous opportunity um, sad we don't get that opportunity but there will be plenty of chances um, on Sunday. What do you make of uh, Quinn being in the booth to call plays? Did it affect anything uh, field or was it different for you guys? Yeah, it was kind of our, it was kind of all of our first runs at it. Um, most of the time I've had the guys on the field um, calling the plays, but it was different. And uh, credit to Clint, credit to uh, Coach Janoco for a lot of that, um, for a lot of that uh, like quarterback coach exchange that's extremely important um, during dead balls and timeouts. Um, there was a lot of good that came from it, and uh, if that's where he's comfortable, that's the best place that he could be for us. Outside the, like the obvious, he's up farther. Like, what, what's different about it? Like, just someone else to huddle. Like, you're going to Janoka now instead of the OC. Like, what, what's different? Well, you're going to your position coach, right? Um, and again, it's all it's all coming from the same mouth, which is which is great. That's paramount. That's that's the most important thing. Um, and that, that doesn't change when the OC is on the field or the head coach is the guy calling the offensive plays. Most of the times you're hearing it from the position coach because there's position-specific things that you need to know for each play, and he could always give you reminders for certain, for certain occurrences. Uh, one of the things that Derek was talking about with this 
new coaching staff is that they're all on message. Yeah, it's like they're all saying the same thing. It's not just like uh, you know you hear twenty different things. Like, is that important? And, uh, and is that kind of impressed you as well? No, it's vital. Um, again, like I just said, hearing the hearing one message from one mouth. Um, is extremely important because it builds culture, it builds accountability, it builds togetherness, like it builds camaraderie, it builds like, it's a team building exercise, right? So we're all hearing the same thing, we're all taking the same note, right? You could, and you could, you could get the secondhand information and that could be, that could be, you know, it could be better, uh, but a lot of the times it, it could be a lot worse, um, just because you're not all, all hearing the, the same direct information. I love it. Um, I, I love meeting together. I love hearing what um, I love hearing what Coach Shinoko is telling the quarterbacks on certain plays, like th why this is a seven-step drop, who we're looking at first, what we're not trying to hit, when to roll, like when to look for roll coverage, different stuff like that. Um, it's awesome to hear like um, JB, the O line coach, like telling the tackles what they're looking for on like some of our some of our wide zone tracks, like. It's just fantastic to always be able to be in the know, right, and not go have to hunt down the information. Uh, I feel like we've been talking a lot about Dallin Hulker uh, for this camp. Is there anything that's impressed you out here? Yeah, and uh, I think he's he's done a, a number of things to be talked about. Um, I love the kid. Um, unbelievable coming in. He's got a, a great personality. He's quiet, but... He, he has a great sense of humor, and um, he's a very, very good football player. Um, and we're going to look for him to, you know, grow into a role to have some impact this year would be, would be my hope for him. I think he's got tremendous talent, um, great wheels, uh, good head on his shoulders, and great hair to boot. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the ground fit today.